Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. The first Jaws movie was released on June 20th, 1975 and brought terror to moviegoers for years to come. A little less than five months earlier, our next Hall of Famer was drafted number six overall. Similar to that terrifying shark in the movie, his particular set of skills would proceed to spread terror in the eyes of offensive players for years to come. This would earn him the nickname, Dr. Doom. Welcome to the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. Your host is Arnie Chapman. Football is his passion, and he wants you to come along with him to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board his DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. Great Scott. This time as we step off our DeLorean, the date is February 7th, 1953, and we are in Mobile, Alabama. And this is episode three of an eight-part series, where we're going to cover a brief overview of each of the 2018 Hall of Fame class inductees. Like I said before, these are going to be some shorter episodes. And then the last day is going to be on August 4th, which is the day of enshrinement. And because I've been giving you a couple quotes from Gramps, I have another one for you. This time, it is in regards to possibly when a running back or quarterback, maybe they got a playoff on this dude. But then that inevitable next play where he would end up knocking the rocks out of the brickets, there's only one thing that he'd have to say to him. And it's what Gramps is all the time. It's, if you got it coming, you're going to get it. And get it they did. They would be lying on their backs on the ground, looking towards the sky, wondering why did they ever make those inappropriate comments to Dr. Doom? Because like I said, if you got it coming, you're going to get it. But before I get started with this episode, I wanted to remind you to head to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and make sure you mash that little subscribe button on your podcast player of choice so you'll get the hottest freshest off the press episodes each and every week. I'd also appreciate an honest review of the show. But getting back to our hero, this time we're talking about our second senior member of the 2018 Hall of Fame class. Like I said, he was born on February 7th, 1953 in Mobile, Alabama. This gentleman's name is Robert Lorenzo Brazil Jr. And he was an outstanding outside linebacker where he would come in at 6 foot 4 inches, 241 pounds. But this dude had the speed too. His 40-yard dash was 4.6. So of course, with this athleticism, he was a consensus All-American at Jackson State before being drafted number 6 overall by the Houston Oilers. As a side note, Sweetness himself, yes, that's Walter Payton, was drafted number 4 overall in the same year. He would also become a Hall of Famer. But the coolest thing that I thought was they both played together at Jackson State. I mean, holy cannoli, man. Two great players of this caliber that would end up going to the Hall of Fame together on the same team, Jackson State. You know, this little tiny school who I don't even think had someone drafted from since 2008 and then all the way back in 2000. But we're talking here about Robert Brazil. And he did live up to the billing as the number six overall draft pick for the Houston Oilers that year. He would end up winning multiple rookie awards, most notably the AP Defensive Rookie of the Year, and he had an immediate impact on the Oiler defense. He would take and lead them to a 10-4 and record, which might not seem that great, but this was their first winning season in eight years before he got there. He would end up playing 10 seasons for the Oilers, from 75 to 84, but his best years came between 1978 and 1980. This is when the team had three straight 10 win seasons and also made the playoffs for those three years. But in 78 and 79, they went back to back 
to the AFC Championship. And as an individual perspective, Robert's best year was in 1978, one of the years when they went to the AFC Championship games. In that year, he had 185 tackles, 95 of them were solo, and 98 of them were assists. Now, they didn't keep track of sacks and stuff like that up until later, which we're going to find out. And then in the championship game of that year, he had nine tackles and a fumble recovery. His uniform was number 52, just like another Hall of Famer this year, a Mr. Ray Lewis. And just like Ray Lewis, he was known for his big hits and ferocity, which ended up earning him that nickname, Dr. Doom, by his peers. And this was great and all, but the thing that was even more impressive and amazing to me was he started every single game of his career. He never missed a game. He went 147 straight regular season games, which was a record at the time for an oiler, not to mention the seven playoff appearances that he had. I mean, a guy that was known for big hits and just an overwhelmingly Energizer Bunny type style of a motor where he would just keep going to be able to play all of those games without ever missing one. I I thought that was pretty cool. And it just, if you watch the videos and you go back, I recommend it. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like, I don't know, uh, a swarm or something where when he was coming at the quarterbacks, it's just like a dude, tiny little dude in a fisher boat, you know, with this big old wave tsunami coming at me. He's like, well, I'm not going anywhere. Just duck and cover and hope that maybe somehow I make it out the other end. I mean, that's what it was like. He would just, he would come across him over the top, like throw his arms on top of people and just bring them down. And it was like, He's not going to just bring you down. He's going to bring you down. So it was a pretty impressive mark for him to be able to go all of those years, as far as I'm concerned. And at the time of his retirement, he was the holder of the most consecutive and tied for the most overall Pro Bowl selections for the Houston Oilers. He would end up becoming a member of the all-decade team from the 1970s. You know, he played from 76 to 80 because that's when he was drafted. He would be named to five straight First team all pros, and then also a second team all pro in 81, with a final stat line of 1,281 tackles, 13 interceptions, 14 fumble recoveries, and 48 unofficial sacks. Now, the sacks did not become official until 1982. That's why they said unofficial, which he probably had more even. So, to kind of speak as a side note, someone that kind of gave him, I guess, a name because of the way that he created defenses, and then later on he would describe him in a certain way, was Bum Phillips, who was a revolutionary, and he was credited with bringing the 3-4 concept to the NFL, revolutionizing defenses and becoming a terror to opponents, and quarterbacks were just quivering at their knees because they didn't know where to go besides rush back home to mama. And he was the coach, the defensive coach for Robert Brazil when he came into the league. Now, as a side note also, Wade Phillips currently in the NFL, is a uh, son of Bum Phillips. But Brazil was often referred to as a pass rushing outside linebacker that is required for the 3-4 concept to work. And Brazil was a guy. A quote from the late Bum Phillips about Brazil kind of summed it up short and sweet, but about as good as any kind of quote could be for an outside linebacker. And it went as such. He was Lawrence Taylor before there was a Lawrence Taylor. The end. That's all you need to know. LT possibly the greatest outside linebacker of all time. And he was being compared to him, saying basically this was the dude before there was the dude that created the dude and the need or the possibility to have a dude because he helped create the 3-4 concept for the NFL, getting to the quarterback from the outside linebacker perspective. But that kind of brings it close to the end here. That's just a brief overview of his career. Again, that's what these episodes are about. And um, the presenter for Robert is going to be his father. Robert Brazil Sr. So when you see the induction ceremony coming up on Saturday, go ahead and check it out. You'll see them both there. And just highly recommend going back to the YouTube verse, punching this dude's name into there, maybe even saying big hits, something like that. And just go see and respect what he did for a guy that was able to not miss a game. The way that he played, it just, to me, the math doesn't add up. But you gotta see it to understand what I'm talking about. Now with Brazil done, that means that our contributor and both seniors are out of the way, and we're on to the modern era. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of the Football History Dude, and were able to gain some knowledge nuggets about one of the greatest pass-rushing outside linebackers in league history. Tomorrow, I'm going to cover the career of Randy Moss. (laughs) 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Football History Dude. To make sure you're the first to get the next episode, please subscribe on your podcast player of choice and head on over to thefootballhistorydude.com for the show notes and more information on the history of the NFL. And remember, dudes, where we're going, we don't need roads. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.